Esports is video gaming, elevated into a competitive level. Esports knows no boundaries. Teams from different countries all over the globe compete head-to-head, -head, fighting for prizes and prestige. Live events are broadcasted online to millions and millions of viewers, watching from the comfort of their computers, tablets, and mobile devices. A diverse range of video games have become platforms for competitions. While each individual game is unique, and even vary in genre, the core of esports remains the same. The player. The esports player is not your average breed of gamer. These are the elite of elites, unparalleled in their craft. These competitors give their all in training and discipline, equal in dedication to advancing themselves over their competition to any athlete. For them, their games go beyond being a casual hobby or leisurely pastime. Esports, is a profession. Intense displays of exceptional skill, drama from the lives and the challenges of players, and ease of access through multimedia platforms have garnered esports a growing number of enthusiastic fans, following their favorite players, teams, or games. Esports, the future of gaming and entertainment, has arrived. Okay, All right, so, yeah. so good evening. Welcome back to Elite X Raptors Game Night. Mm -hmm. And we hope you love you love that video, uh, which talks about esports. If only all the subject matter taught in high school was like that, <laughs> I'll probably graduated like valedictorian. <laughs> so it's a cool video. It's a cool video. <laughs> and um, now we'll be moving to the second game. So yeah, let's. So um, if you're just tuning in, this is the second game out of three games that we have tonight. It's uh, we have show match. Show matches between three teams, K17, Deadpan Gaming, and Jonas, Jonas with friends. friends. Yeah. So the first match was concluded earlier on. It was Jonas with Friends versus K17, with Jonas with Friends coming out on top. But uh, here we have the second game for tonight. It's uh, K17 versus Deadpan Gaming. Oh, no, it's Jonas. Oh. It's K17. It's K17 versus yeah. um, Deadpan Gaming. K17 versus Deadpan mm -hmm. Gaming. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, K17 versus Deadpan Gaming. And. It's K70 trying to uh, gonna try to redeem themselves uh, from their loss with JWF in this second game of the night. Mm -hmm. And um, let's talk about the teams uh, actually from both from both um, the players from both teams and the second match. So we see Deadpan Gaming and K70. So Deadpan Gaming's team members are Exa, ALZ, MF Doom, Buzz, Pow Pow, and Sneaky Sneaky. Now, Deadpan Gaming, go. by the way, have been, they have been the longest, um, longest staying team in the community. Yeah. Ever since they won, they have been there. So they actually showed how persistent players can be in, in going up the ranks, uh, climbing the ladder into the gold league. They started silver, I think. And then they went on to proceed and win matches in the Gold League, in the higher rung of the Gold League of the Elite community. And the key to Deadpan Gaming, so we have K17, we're talking about they, they're, they're this very versatile, adaptive team. Jonas and Friends is this mysterious, strategic, tactical team. Deadpan Gaming is your all-around team, I guess. Not really versatile per se, but they are the old-school kind of mechanic type of team. Which means that they are they're not really affected by the new meta and they know exactly what they need or they, they have this very substantial knowledge of the game so that they don't really have to you know bring themselves up to force themselves to play that for, for play the new uh, for the changes in the new patches yeah you don't need to follow the <coughs> meta if you are if you know that you're confident in your own abilities exactly so next we have K70. So for those of you just tuning in, just knowing about K70, K70 is composed by Team Captain Howling, followed by QSE, FTP, LED, and Passy. Now K70 again, we showed how exactly uh, we, before Ten, the game, seven, before the first game, we're talking about how resilient and how good these guys are in that comeback mechanic. And they actually proved us right. And even though they were completely pummeled in the first 20 minutes of the game, they were able to extend the game to a, around 64 minutes and 30 seconds. That's how good, that's how strong they are in terms of just adapting to the enemy. But of course, adapting doesn't really mean that much if 
Maybe even if the other team would be able to dominate you and just outsmart you in almost every other game, which is what oh. happened in the previous game. Yeah, so unfortunately for K17, the comeback mechanics just weren't <coughs> enough to salvage their uh, early game loss against JWF, but we might see a different story in this game this time around. So moving into the drafting phase, we have uh, Deadpan Gaming and K17. The bands were Phantom Lancer and Troll Five Warlord. Okay, Troll seconds. Warlord, very understandable. And on the opposite side, there's Bristleback and Sniper, of course. Um, Troll Bristle Warlord and Sniper are the carries to have been banned. Oh. And the picks were um, mm -hmm. Vengeful Spirit and Axe. Yeah, here's the, the, the dynamic support duo. Vengeful Spirit, um, good uh, support all throughout. From level 1, you have a great stun, and then you can follow that up by boosting your ally's damage with the aura and the wave of terror yeah and you have a great great positioning skill with the swap and acts as well the berserker skull of course 3.2 seconds of um mani um mani magic immunity uh penetrating disabled yeah so uh, very great picks with mm -hmm. those two heroes those two supports k70 However, this time they go for the Queen of Pain. Earlier on, yeah, they did lose to the Queen of Pain. This time around, they're hoping to use that Five Queen of Pain seconds. to their side this time. And Earthshaker, Earthshaker, I'm not really uh, sure if Earthshaker's been favorable lately. Mm -hmm. Well, the key with, um, I think it's tricky. Knowing K70 from our previous games, they not they don't really roll out the Earthshaker. But it might actually be somehow advantageous to them because Earthshaker is actually one of the key heroes of Deadman Gaming. Okay, so it's it's kind of like a third ban. Mm -hmm. yes, so it's yes. kind of like a third it's ban. It's an indirect ban. They Seven want to seconds. deny uh, Deadman Gaming from their Earthshaker. So Five they've picked seconds. it up for themselves. Actually, not really too bad, I guess. The Vengeful Spirit kind of circum uh, circumvents the Earthshaker with a swap. You can just swap through the Fissure in case of an emergency. Um, yeah, but then again, uh, long range stun. Such as that should be able to cancel out blinks that maybe the vengeful spirit or the axe might uh, later have. So still a good pick, still a great pick. Mm -hmm. Obviously, great for team fights, and we're gonna have to see where the next uh, bands go. Mm -hmm. For now, we've seen the Skyrath and the Anti Mage band. Yeah, so they um, don't want the Skyrath and axe combo. Yeah, that's quite potent, especially since you also have a vengeful spirit. Any time that those three move together in the lane, someone's gonna die. So they ban that out. Um, Deadpan Gaming banned out the anti-mage, okay? So they don't want Ten a prolonged fight, I guess. They don't want a carry that they can't bully around with mm -hmm. their ganking heroes. Mm -hmm. And K70, they ban out the puck, okay? So they want to Reserve force Deadpan time. Gaming in a position that they will have no proper team fight to counter K70's AOE with the Earthshaker and Queen of Pain, seems like, yeah? The silence? Good for counter initiation, mm -hmm. but um, if you don't have that puck, maybe you might want to go for, with a silencer instead, mm -hmm. right? But they banned out Centaur yeah, Warner to uh, prevent K70 from getting any more uh, proper team fight oriented heroes. So let's see where Deadpan Gaming are gonna go with their pick. Okay, do you have a, um, any idea based on what you know from Deadpan Gaming? Well, if they don't, um, Deadpan Gaming really loves to roll out an Ancient Apparition and Ogre Magi. So, you might actually see that coming in, at least for the last support. Um, for the offlaner, I think, Ten would Axe be a good offlaner? Um, they have Axe already, so... Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I guess, I guess that's what they're going for. ...can go offlane depending mm -hmm. on what K7T have uh, in store. If they're gonna go for a range uh, carry, maybe not, but mm -hmm. there oh, we go. Oh, wow, an Invoker. Radiance. Oh yeah, I remember that Pan Gaming rolling out an Invoker back in the days. Actually, all of the teams that we have tonight have Invokers. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why Invoker was banned in the last game. Mm -hmm. uh, K70 have their own Invoker mm -hmm. player. Mm -hmm. It's QSC, right? Mm -hmm. It's QSC. And here in the in Dead Pan Gaming, I think it's um, Pau. Pau Pau? Yeah, yeah. Is it Pau? I think it's, it's how I'm not really sure. Was it sneaky? But either way, Deadpan Gaming does have those. Uh, they, they have there are lots of overlaps on the good heroes. Yeah, Jonas with Friends also has an Invoker of their own. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, these teams really fond of Invoker. And it's going to um, come out this time with Deadpan Gaming. So, Ten we're in for a treat. I love watching Invoker games. <laughs> yeah, and um, oh, Five I don't know yet, but um, based on how Deadpan Gaming um, plays, 
Dead, Dead Pan Gaming plays. Um, it's normally Reserve they normally time. use a draft where they have as much reliable stun as they can. So they, uh, if they can pick somebody <clears throat> who's in line with the draft, and if that it's better if that hero has a disable because it's normally how they sequence these stuns, these ganks that actually win them uh, that actually wins them the early game. Yeah, so reliable stuns are a big thing to look out here with Dead Band Gaming. So they have a core already, mid invoker probably. And there we go, the, yeah, the Ogre Magi. Spot on, high five. There we go, the Ogre Magi pick from Dead Band Gaming. Sometimes it's, it pays to know what your opponent likes to run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Dead Band Gaming, they go with the Ogre Magi. Ogre Magi not really too popular lately because of the nerf on the range mm -hmm. on the Fire Blast. But really, if you think of Ogre Magi, not just for the early game Fire Blast, um, Ogre Magi later on, the Ignite is still devastating. Mm -hmm. The slow coming in from the Ignite and the Bloodlust as well. It's the Ten most powerful seconds. spell of Ogre Magi, I'd have to say. The Bloodlust on a proper hero. Um, any big carry with a Bloodlust, just so devastating. And you, you also have some buffs from the Invoker Reserve and the Vestral yeah. Spirit as well. So Ogre Magi makes a strong carry, a really, really strong carry. Yeah, and, and um, when you think about it, it's, it's also that um, that capability of Ogre Magic to scale up in the end game with the help of the Aghanim Scepter because the uh, his the Aghanim Scepter gives Ogre Magic an additional skill. Um, I think it's yeah, it's called Unrefined Fire Blast, and because you have these two possible stuns, possible disables from one from a single hero that can multicast. By the way, it gives you that pseudo burst. Yeah, in uh, speaking, in a team fight, you can cast. Probably like five or six of these, mm -hmm. especially since the cooldown for Unrefined Fire Blast mm -hmm. is just six Ten seconds. Mm -hmm. seconds. So, in a 13 second span or a mm -hmm. 12 second span, mm -hmm. you'd be able to cast out four oh, Fire Blasts practically. Mm -hmm. And Ogre Magi will have enough mana to support that, even with just an, uh, an Aganims, mm -hmm. because the mana for the Unrefined Fire Blast Radiant scales. Yes. So, he'll be able, always be able to cast that. You know, um, I see a lot of people have glanced over. O over the ogre, the big ogre, mm -hmm. because of the range nerf on Fire Blast, right? Mm -hmm. But really, I don't think it matters because in the late game, you'll Ten you're not gonna be walking to up go. to people anymore. You're in going to be Ten. yeah Blinking, in team fights, four staffing. blinks, four staff Smoking. swaps from the vengeful spirit. Yeah. yeah, so the positioning isn't really gonna matter and anymore you have the towards lust, the, by the way. late game. Yeah, and you have the bloodlust. You're uh, able to run quickly towards the team yeah. fight if you need to. But and K K70. K70 Whoa, look at that band gaming just banning out all the cores. Yeah. Jug last juggernaut bot, although mm. but Radiant being more being more uh playful with their uh bands, for some reason they banned out Slark. To go. Hmm. Yeah. Is uh Slark a known Five dead band hero? Seconds. Not really. Uh I think they're just tr they're, they're they're literally Reserve just time. trying to figure their way their way out of this drafting phase. And right. you know the thing with K70's lineup is it has this big um, overhead in terms of reliability. And what do I mean by that? If you look at all those heroes, they don't really come online re really fast after a team fight. Oh, you have a Clinks from Dead Pan Game. Very Clinks. interesting as well. So yeah, and now, now you have the Clinks on Dead Pan Game. So I think it's going to be the fight between Dead Pan Game and K70 would be more on how fast can you really come back after a team fight because K70 has all these long cooldown heroes. This all, this very this very dependent skill shot dependent heroes, and then you have in Dead Pan Gaming where you have low cooldown spells and you can just try and try again if you fail. Yeah, so K Seven T is uh, the team that is going to be aiming to go all out, all in with big Five team fights yes. while Dead Pan Gaming crossing their fingers, wishing yeah. that everybody would be dead after they just throw. Dead uh, Pan Gaming can win by attrition. Enemy. Invoker has lots of spells to cast. Ogre Magi can cast spells over and over again, and yeah, Clinks can move in and out. Eating creeps, regenerating yes. his HP, and you know what? I I I actually saw now why they banned the Slark, because of the um, uh, Ogre Magi Bloodlust and Invoker Alacrity. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> so wow. high attack speed getting. Uh, uh, like, I am oh, not Mirana. quite sure about this pick. <laughs> what yeah. do you feel about Mirana, Coach? Um, Mirana is such a hard hero to play with. I think if you wa want the Mirana, you need. A long duration disabled before Mirana, like mm. maybe like a lion. Shad yeah, lion. Two li or uh, you need not just a lion. You need a lion and a vengeful spirit put together to be able to optimize that uh, arrow. Otherwise, this even just one stun from the lion, maybe two stuns from the lion, won't be enough to ensure that the li uh, Mirana's arrows always connect. So, 
Um, I'm not sure if the Miranda is going to be helpful. I think they want to go for the Invis, the Moonlight Shadow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the Invis rune may actually help them to set up set, set those big ults up. I mean, Echo Slam, and then you have this yeah, the, mag the, the reverse, polarity. reverse polarity. I mm. think that's, that's what they're going for with the Miranda pick. So right now, we're into the game already. And into the introductions. Is it my turn? It's my <laughs> turn. It's my turn. Okay, so for the Radiant, we have K7T, Team Captain Howling on the Magnus there. Where is this guy? I, um, where is he? Oh, he's at the top, planting wards. No, he's actually here with Earthshaker, with Quack X, Quack SE, K7T, FTP, the center warner from earlier. Oh, before we go with the introductions, you might see a team fight coming in, Deadpan Gaming. Did they smoke? They just they just um, climbed up the ramp and just invaded the space of K7T. I don't think there will be any engagement here though. So you can see the trend here. The Radiant still going for the top lane, and we see the Dar going for the bottom lane. Bounty rune. The the Mirana finds an arrow. They know that the Clinks is there with an invisibility with this wind walk, but no, they won't, they don't have any invisibility yeah. items yet or revealing items yet. Hell, it's just the first minute of the game. So. Of course, the bottom bounty goes to the tire, the top bounty goes to the Radiant. On back with the uh, introductions, we see LED playing as KOP. He actually, he was the sniper from the, fir from the earlier, so we might actually see um, KOP playing very aggressively. And Passy as the Mirana. Meanwhile, for the Dart team, we have Pa Pao as Axe at the bottom lane, playing with Hodor as the Ogre Magi and Exe. Playing as, a, uh, as the Vengeful Spirit. At the middle lane, we see Sals. Als? Als. We see Als playing as the Invoker. And on the safe lane, we have Sneaky, who doesn't really need anybody's help surviving this lane because he's, a, he's against a Mirana and he has the wind walk. So, back to you, coach. Yeah, so um, let's take a look at these lineups. This lion is busy stacking here, the Ancients, at the, near the middle lane. Uh, I think for the Magnus, yeah, the Magnus is going to want to farm that with the Empower later. Mm -hmm. And Magnus versus Invoker mid. I'm not sure um, if the Magnus is supposed to be faring well. Actually, he is. Uh, he's able to take down a lot of the HP of the Invoker and um, force the Invoker back. I think the Invoker is saving for something. Oh, he wants a Midas. He wants yeah, a he wants Midas. a Midas. Look at that, no regen. Um, he bought some Tangos, no bottle. He wants an early Midas. But um, is that a good choice for him? I think um, the Magnus with level 2 Shockwave and a level 1 Skewer actually has decent killing potential ah, for this Invoker. Ah, Did you yeah. see that single Shockwave? Yeah. It wiped out like the remaining half of his HP. So, um, yeah, Magnus is gonna get his bottle. Actually, he should have gotten his bottle if someone didn't send it up the top lane. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> this Miran actually. Um, picked up something i don't know what that something was but it wasn't sentries yeah th that's, that's for sure that's not that's not really a good uh thing to do to, mm -hmm. to compromise your mid for the sake of your own um whatever yes. item you're trying to get yeah okay i have a question for you since we have an empower on this magnus do you think we might see a crit shaker an earth shaker that goes scary do you think it's possible and we're talking about quack here quack wow. is like k70 scary oh so we might have a fight here the we might see an engagement there xa getting caught out of position throws in the stun quack as he's trying to budge his own fisher but no the venture is too far here hodor replies with a stun here clun strike coming in from invoker not going to find led and now it's going to be a disengaged oh no call coming in from pow pow quack as he's out of position the stun is thrown by the vegetable on the creep <laughs> he missed the stun on the axe and he will be able this is going to a, this is going to be a big regret there for the French Spirit. Yeah, this would have been first blood already if the stun landed on the Earthshaker. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the Lion, low on HP, actually just stacking creeps, stacking creeps, stacking creeps. Mm -hmm. You know what, what just happened to the French Spirit there? You know, when you really like somebody, <laughs> but you don't, you, you hold it to yourself. Uh, and then, suddenly, <laughs> probably like, the person likes you as well. And <laughs> there's just so much regret <laughs> boiling deep inside you. And that's exactly what Vengeful Spirit feels right now. <laughs> uh, that's a shame. Maybe Vengeful Spirit will be able to uh, get her Senpai later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, Earthshaker here, level 3 almost. Queen of Pain level 3. Actually, we might see a kill on the Vengeful Spirit. Vengeful Spirit is going to be easy to kill for this Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain should be looking for that level 2 Scream of Pain with just 70 EXP. So after this creep, ra creep wave, yeah, when he gets that level 2, oh no! Oh no, we see Quack actually getting caught out of position, getting called by Pow Pow. Is this the first blood? Quack actually tries to 
throw in the Fisher. First blood goes to Exe. Wonderful play there. And this Urchik was just playing too careless. What? Yeah. He had no business roaming around that side of he the jungle have without been any this ward. Side. Should have yeah. stuck to this side of the trees. But the lion right now, they're moving in. Um, I don't think he can catch the axe. Axe is too tacky at this point. Yeah, I mean he has. He's sitting on 500 HP, and neither the spell, neither the KOP or the lion has enough damage between the uh, um, um, between themselves to actually finish this uh, axe. Yeah. Plus they have backup from the ogre man, right? Oh, yeah. The vengeful spirit right behind. So the first blood, uh, sorry, the second blood there because of carelessness, just pure carelessness coming in from Kate. Oh, the clinks died. Um, was it an arrow? Okay, so we might actually see. Um, oh, so we're looking at the replay. Oh, what are we looking here? So we're looking at the replay the replay there from the, the previous blood, right? match. Yeah, so nothing happening there. And a TP coming in from um, Sneaky. So I think he was able to be picked up by either by an arrow or just got outsmarted by the Mirana. If you look at the kills, we actually see Passy killing this um, this Clink. Clink. So I guess it's it was really a good play from Mirana right there. And this is actually uh, this is actually a thing with players when you're fighting against a Mirana and you you see this Mirana always missing the arrows. You get to you get, you get a bit too cocky for your own good, and I think that's what happened for the clinks up the hit. So the middle lane, we see the Earthshaker just positioning himself up the ramp, trying to lock this Invoker down. But however, this Invoker has complete Quas Wex Exhort, and he can actually invoke a Ghost Rock if he has to. Yeah, so he has a Midas recipe, still no um, gloves, so still out of that Midas. Let's take a look at the last hits in the night. Oh, we see an engagement coming here at the bottom lane. Near the tower, FTP might fall. Auto attacks coming in from the Ventral Spirit, Illusions, and he actually falls. So another kill there coming in. And the Mirana finds a kill on the Clinks at the top lane once again. So this Clinks is just being creamed by this Mirana, not really his best way. I mean, I know it's Clinks is very squishy. But for you to for you to have Windwalk and die that easy twice in under five minutes, that's being careless. Yeah, against a Mirana. Mirana's not really a bursty kind of <coughs> hero, no? Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you'd have to be dying to the arrow. But the Earthshaker was there to help. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe yeah. that's additional damage. You have to give credit to that. I think it was the Fisher that helped the arrow land, maybe. Yes. Dyer's okay, so now Clinks is has his level six and will be Radiant's able to you know help himself with a farm from the death pack on the creeps. Okay, at the bottom lane, you see another engagement there. Battle Hunger by Pao Pao on top of the QOP, QOP with a Shadow Strike. The stun from Exe is not, it's not finding the target. TP coming in from FTP, everybody will back out. Pao Pao is in danger of dying. He's slowed down by the Shadow Strike. Wonderful Hex coming in for FTP and the Impale. Pao Pao is dead. Scream of Pain coming in from QOP oh, and that is the game. And yeah, the action is not yet finished. Howling is coming in. The Magnus finds this um yeah, finds this Ogre Magic, but Ogre Magic being the set pseudo pacifist that he is he just walks away after a stun oh now they see the oh, now Vengeful Spirit is out of position what is Vengeful Spirit doing it RP coming in from Howling Skewer into the tower the Vengeful Spirit doesn't have enough HP and will he survive no, of course he won't survive that Epil coming in from Lion and the arrow from Mirana is going to end this Invoker wonderful play there from Howling Magnus takes the double kill 5-2 in favor of K70 at this point and this might be a push in the middle lane wonderful play yeah, so um, that first reverse polarity of the game, just on a solo vengeful spirit, but well worth it because it kind of forced the invoker to overextend and get killed by the lion and the Mirana as well. So well played by K70 right now. The score is 5-2 and is this tower going to go down without a fight? Um, it looks like the vengeful spirit doesn't really want to defend against this. Mm -hmm. So invoker TPs and, and well, at the very least before that, the, the hand of Midas was used. So. Yeah, that's, so that's something. It's still off cooldown. The, the worst thing to be in this game is to have uh, Midas off cooldown uh, when you're dead. Right? So, mm -hmm. net worth, let's take a look. Where's the Invoker? Dead in the middle, fifth place. <laughs> Only 2,300 gold. For a mid hero, that's incredibly poor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, top is unsurprisingly the Magnus, yes, because he's able to zone out the. Um, invoker much better. He has better region and a spammable nuke. And number two is Mirana. Number one right now is Mirana, just overtaking the uh, Magnus. Because of those kills, he has two kills and one assist. Wait, hang on. Kill, he actually died. 
Okay, so Quap so, died okay. here in the bottom lane. At the bottom lane, we see Quap, we see the Earth Shaker getting caught down, getting caught by the Ber Berserker's call and the Vengeful Spirit Magic Missile. So locked down and dead. So Quack um, Quack really SE helping out Deadpan Gaming gained their, gain their lo lost footing and with that fourth kill. Yeah. So now it's five v uh, five um, versus score the four the score. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and. K70 with a slight edge because of the Mirana and the um, Magnus' lead. Okay, so Vengeful Spirit going to find FTP. FTP, did he miss a stun? A ward was placed by FTP there to provide him additional vision. Exa, will Exa continue here? Is he trying to make it look like he's also an illusion? No, FTP trying to chase down the real Exa and the Vengeful Spirit will be running away. Magnus there to help, but at least there was some space there for Invoker. And at the top lane, we see Sneaky gaining additional space. I think it's going for the Orchid Malev Malevolence first. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really late Orchid. It's already <laughs> 10 minutes in and he doesn't even have one quarter staff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Oh, uh, arrow, oh, there we go. Bullseye. This is going to okay, be the Link's Oh, no, another stun. Okay, follow up stun coming in from oh. Earthshaker. And he gets revealed by this the uh, Dust of Appearance. And this Clinks already <laughs> dying three times within the 10 minute mark. Without any boots, without any quarter staff. Yeah, still, still no quarter staff. If it's gonna be an orchid, it's gonna be a no. It's not quarter staff. It's it's oblivion orchid. staff. Yeah, you need a quarter staff okay, before quarter you staff, yeah, yeah. make an oblivion staff. Mm -hmm. So, eek. Yeah, I think this is <laughs> at this rate, it's gonna be a twenty minute. Oh, and ogre magic finds it on the queen of pain once again. How can you die as queen of pain when you're ranged and two of the heroes you're fighting against is? I think um, maybe a bit of overconfidence there. Mm -hmm. Oh, just exchange coming in back and forth. We see at the middle lane, Howling finds the kill on the Invoker with the help of FTP. So this is just a lot of um, back and forth coming in for both teams. Yeah, but I think the Invoker dying is um, much worse than the Queen of Pain dying. Because mm -hmm. the Invoker is actually carrying a Midas. Oh, yes. So he needs uh, to get farmed. He needs those levels. That's what the Midas is for. But without... Um, you know, without staying in lane, getting levels, then I, I think that uh, you're not really optimizing the position you built your hero to be in. Mm -hmm. So now everybody, um, the action dies down. Haste on X on the VS right here, and they think they're going for the uh, sneak attack here at the middle lane. They're thinking that's only Magnus there, but based on the last team fight, they should know that Lion is nowhere to find. Oh, Blink Dagger there on Axe, catching both herows. He's trying to go for the Culling Blade, but he gets Hex instead. Oh, wonderful Skewer there. Will Lion live? No, he actually was get to, was too close there. And now Howling will fall as well, even after the Mirana ult. But it does, does it matter that much, I guess? Because at the top lane, Clinks also falls to the Mirana. So it's a two for two exchange now. Wonderful arrow coming in, hitting on the VS and Quack is he coming in for the kill. Just ends it with a Fisher auto attack coming from Passy. Passy finds the kill there with five kills. So it's wonderful this Mirana might be carrying after already has the ultimate orb. Might be a Manta style soon enough. Yeah, so that's a great record from Mirana. Arrows upon arrows and then kills upon kills. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The arrow was made without a without a um, observer ward, I guess. So it was a blind shot. It's a blind arrow, I think. Yeah, but he saw the um, Vengeful Spirit down here. So mm -hmm. it was a predictive shot with the Vengeful Spirit mm -hmm. just running um, right up the ramp right there. Mm -hmm. So very predictable, actually. Double That's damage. the Vengeful Spirit's fault. Mm -hmm. So now, okay, again, action is dying down a bit. And this is just DG for you. Ganks upon ganks. As soon as K7 th thinks that they're safe, they're already converging into a single lane trying to find somebody to kill. So Passy doesn't know that the, the, the entire DG gaming is here. They're baiting him out. They're baiting her out with a clinks. And Passy gets a, a little too overconfident here on this side. Blink on Pop How might actually get this. Oh, he actually captures a Sunstrike coming in for Invoker as well. Axe finds a kill and gets that mega kill streak from Mirana. And wow, that's just good. That's really, really good initiation. This Blink Dagger and Axe is key. Now Howling also has his Blink Dagger as well. coming in from both teams. And now Qua Ultra Kill from Quack SE just finishes. Everybody from Deadpan Gaming, the everybody is getting caught out. No need for the Blink for this ES. I'll skewer it in front of you and just Echo Slam right in front of their face. Wow. Man, really good if play. We have a replay. If you, look, if you look at the replay here, we can actually see that wonderful screw right into Echo Slam and a Fisher, and there was no way the Deadpan Gaming could have gone away from that. Wow, this 
K70 being playful like this, yeah. I am speechless. Yeah, so that was a bait of the Mirana. You know, it, uh, it looked like it was a clean kill on the Mirana, mm -hmm. but uh, the Magnus was not gonna let them get, get away with that. Uh -huh. Reverse polarity into an Echo Slam, what more can you want? Mm. I'm Man. guessing that K70 themselves are really standing up right now, just cheering each other up. Good job, dude. Good job. TP is coming in the top lane, Axe initiating on top of the Magnus and the Earthshaker, and they will both fall. Not really the best way to continue a wonderful clash. Yeah, and they're gonna get this tower denied as and well. And this tower is denied, yeah. So at the middle lane, meanwhile, it's just fight upon fight upon fight. LED is going to initiate upon Al's. He has somebody. Mirana is just helping out in the middle of midnight. Sneaky is also behind Mirana, and behind Sneaky, there's Lion. So it's just going to be a constant engagement. FTP goes in for the finger in the hex on top of Sneaky. LED blinks in with the screen of pain. Will he find the kill on, the, on Sneaky? No. But Venture Spirit is right there. Arrow on top of Venture Spirit. Axe throws in his ultimate, getting Sunstrike this passy. Mirana will just fall. What about Shane's there is 3 for Neil for the previous team fights. But I guess it was just part of Team K70's plan because the first tower for K70 up for Dead Fan Gaming is down. This game is exciting. Yeah, this is um, much more exciting than the previous game. A while ago, we saw a lot of calculated moves, a lot of hesitation from both teams but this Radiant time around it's no holds barred attack. from both sides mm -hmm. every man just wants to get Radiant in on the action even the supports want back. to keep on fighting so mm -hmm. this is oh uh, so much so much exciting so much yes. fun and, and, and dead Punk game is really playing this very smart they know that there's no wars there hodor coming in with an aston and just initiate follow up initiate from papa just finishes this F ftp off and now magnus is coming in he is very near Ash, I don't know where everybody's coming in, but out, whenever there's a team fight, it's just one hero after the next. Like they're purposely being very playful with how they execute the team fights. <clears throat> yeah. So um, as you said, you were 100% spot on with the drafting analysis. Um, K70 is really more hoping for big team fights like that big uh, skewer. Mm -hmm. Another oh, oh, skewer into an arrow. Did you see that? A wonderful you play. See that? Howling goes for the skewer into <laughs> an arrow. Wonderful play right there. Pao Pao goes in with a berserker skull. Will be able to finish it. Skewer coming in from Howling, but Pao Pao will fall. LED finishes it off. Holder coming in. This big bomb just marching right in, but not enough damage. Nobody, nobody helped him at all. Double kill there from LED, and we now see three kills from Dead Pan Gaming. Wow, did you see that yeah. skill with an arrow? <laughs> and they continued, an they continued to, to with kills after that. So wonderful play there. Totally, totally. Um, dumbstruck by these guys' play. Mm -hmm. So so awesome. Mm -hmm. So but now I think this is all the pent up rage that they had to deal with fighting JWF and losing that team, uh, losing that game. Yeah, so they might see this as their redemption match, but I know, I know for sure that Dead Band Gaming isn't gonna go down without a fight. Dead mm -hmm. Band Gaming, they've been aggressive all throughout. I'm sure that they're gonna find their um, stride when this axe comes back down here as uh, as well. Here in the bottom lane, I think that's where the oh, arrow coming in from Mirana. Oh, blind arrow. Pao Pao being alert was able to sidestep just a few um, units away from that arrow. Now Hodor is prepared. He has all these spells ready. He doesn't have a cripple with him, but nevertheless, it's going to be a good story. So, now Hodor, um, I think it's, he's really supposed to be on the forward there, baiting the enemy there to get Axe into position. So, LED working with a half HP. Arrow coming in from Mirana. They know that Axe is now locked down. They can now move in. Howling coming in with a skewer, and Papa will actually follow coming in. Future follow up from um, Earthshaker, and now Axe falls. Almost immediately, and they, they, yeah, they had to use a lot of ultimates there. Well, just the Queen of Pains, but it was key because they knew that Axe is the initiate. Yeah, so um, well played right there by K7 T. Timing was and coordination was just so perfect. They hit the Axe, and Magnus, oh. without hesitation, he just moved in. Hang on, the top lane. That you know what? This Earth Shaker Quack is really play is really being a monster right now. He was just at the bottom lane earlier, right? Getting the kill on the axe, but he actually keep it at the top, help the lion get the kill on the Clinks. And Clinks is just so poor right now for a carry. He's 18 minutes in, nothing on his items but robes and masks. Yeah, still no quarter stuff. Still no quarter <laughs> stuff. You, you can't go around hitting everybody with robes and masks. You need to stop for that. Yeah, and my god, I, I originally predicted that it would be a 20-minute Orchid. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a 24-minute Orchid. Yes, and um, the Hand of Midas actually paid off a bit, at least for the Invoker. He now has the Yule Scepter of Divinity. 
Mirada throws in his ultimate into gain position. Hmm. They want to get the kill on this Invoker, but will they be able to get close enough? Close fast enough? Invoker detects that hmm, something is fishy. Nobody can be seen. They just plant a ward right there, and they're bro they're waiting for a team fight. Lion coming in with um, almost hex, but Ghost Walk from ALZ cancels that. Cancels that spell. Great. Did he, did he cast the hex? No, he was able to. Um, Ghost, um, Invoker was able to Ghost Walk before the spell was cast. If you look at the numbers, it's just, just so. Um, the, the kills are on the right. Oh, people. Another, another oh, Pao Pao initiates on top of the lion, but not be able to finish it. Arrow coming in from another battle hunger is chipping away from lion's HP. But will this lion be able to be, will be able to survive? Oh, wonderful reverse party there, catching three heroes at the same time. Magnus locked the enemy down with a shock wave as well. So all they need now is somebody to finish this off. Where is Queen of Pain when you need her? She's nowhere to be found. Howling throws another shock wave. He will fall. Arrow coming in from Mirana. Not going to find anybody. Bad engagement there for K70. Yeah, that was um, <coughs> a wasted opportunity. Such a great, great um, reverse polarity on yeah. three heroes. But if you don't have a follow up, yeah. then you're. Uh, I mean, just look at that replay. I mean, you can see where um, how Deadpan Gaming just played it properly with positioning themselves. And it didn't help that Magnus actually push everybody else to the high ground. I mean, that's the last place you won't want to put your enemies on. And now how... Uh, and K70 had to pay so much for that bad team. Yeah, so just now the Mirana died here. Uh, was killed by the Clinks. So this Clinks is on track to getting his um, Orchid. Yeah, already has two Oblivion Staffs. One mm -hmm. is on the way, on the Courier. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, should be getting that Orchid in... Maybe just a minute or two. Mm -hmm. Should be shorter. Actually got uh, gold accelerated because of that <coughs> kill on the Mirana. Okay, so smoke coming in from K70. It's uh, actually a great... Um, K70 is actually playing this very, very, very smart. If you put a ward in your enemy's jungle, you might as well use it and just keep... Keep... Um, what do you call this? Disturbing the carry. Disturbing the core from farming continuously. Yeah, so... Um, what's the game plan here for Deadpan Gaming? They're smoked in. Um, are they gonna find anyone here in the jungle? They only have two smoke in, so that's their forward. Okay, so Papa comes in, catches the Earthshaker here with a Berserker Skull, and might actually finish, finish him off with a quest. Oh no, he didn't go for the Culling Blade. And Ogre Magi does find that, kill the Earthshaker with that DPS from the Ignite, but Lion will be able to get a double kill. That's a double kill on Axe. And on the Ogre Magi, Hodor was, by the way, on a dominating streak. So that, that's big. You just, you just gave this Lion enough money to almost half of what he needs for a blink dagger yeah so um lion not really too much in farms but has three kills and six assists so uh, a lot of gold this way already should be getting a blink in um maybe five more minutes at this rate <coughs> and um that that's not too bad for support mm -hmm. meanwhile here at the bottom lane the invoker, oh, invoker out the oh, oh wow invoker is online he can now pull off those combinations screen of pain didn't have a way to fight against that deafening blast. Good play right there from Invoker. And you know what? This Invoker is 1,000 gold away from an Aghanim Scepter. Now yeah. that is big. Only 600 right now. Mm. So that was oh, wow. a one shot from the Invoker on the Queen of Pain. I guess um, it's going to be harder for the Invoker to do that on the tankier heroes, mm -hmm. on the Magnus. But still, if you can mm -hmm. do that on the Queen of Pain, you can do a lot. Oh, excellent. Finding, well. finding oh. FTP right there. Sunstrike coming in from Invoker with a call from Pow Pow and Lion is dead. The pickoffs from Deadpan Gaming is non-stop. Yeah, this is really what Deadpan Gaming uh, want to do and need to do. Just keep picking off uh, heroes from K70 uh, left and right. And right now, they're going to be able to take down this um, bottom, bottom tower mm -hmm. with uh, Forge Fritz from the Invoker. <clears throat> Just, uh, wow. Um, the way the Deadpan plays right now on. is... It's not that aggressive, but it's very smart. Very well positioned. Yes, the K70 has more kills because siege. that's how they actually want to play this game. They want to do the team fights. Of course, they would get more kills, but that Pan Gaming is less dependent on that, on those team fight, um, team fight gold. So, if this game goes on and K70 tips being careless like this, that Pan Gaming will end up having the more, more having the greater advantage. Yeah, you know what worries me? Mirana mm -hmm. is building into a passive build. Oh, wow. Mirana's I think is a Lincoln Sphere. Yeah. Um, it would be good if you're behind and if you have another core. Mm. But in this game, who's your core? 
Um, you don't have much DPS coming in from um, Magnus. Yeah, um, Empower is great, but Empower is better on oh, another Hang on, Blinks oh. actually might find FTP right here with the Strength and the Silence of Archimedes is going to be a kill on Lion. So the pickoffs from Dead Pine Game another again, as I have to say, it just doesn't stop. So now at the middle lane, you might actually see a pickoff there on Passy. This Clint is getting into a position to help his teammates out. He's sc scouting the area, finds both the Magnus and the Mirana there, having second thoughts on pulling this off. Now he will be able to scout. Um, oh, he might get the here. courier. He might get the courier. He's oh, gonna get the courier. He's gonna get the courier. Courier's dead. Oh he no! Has it. The courier is dead. Yeah. Wonderful pick up there from um, Clink. And wow, dead pan gaming is just. Uh, being very annoying. A jump through side was bought by Lion just now, even though in death he does not want <laughs> to lose against the Clinks. So he has jump through side. This is going to give them a big advantage over the Clinks, but however, the moment that the jump through side is, lo jump through side is lost to Deadman Gaming, this is going to be detrimental to the progression of K17. Yeah, um, they <coughs> want the initiates from the Mirana ult. So they don't want to lose that gem, but I think um, the gem is going to be helpful for them right now. Mm -hmm. They could secure a lot of ground. Oh, smoke by coming oh. in from Pao Pao. He gets revealed by the mana, decides to just initiate on top of single hero. The Lincoln Spear do doesn't really do its job there. Blocks one, one kill, but doesn't do anything. Too big echo slab there from Quack SE. Catches a triple kill there. The ultimate from Quack is just unbelievable. They're always so, they're always so good. It's just. Wonderful. And now Glinks also dies to Magnus as well. The sentry somewhere or dust help them out or maybe it's just somebody was just out of position. So big echo subject like there. If you look at the uh, if you look at the replay, you can actually see how wonderful the entry from Quack S E right there. I mean he's just like that guy from Naruto shouts out dynamic entry. And you can actually see there that Clinks falls as well. Yeah, it was the the hmm. eye, uh, the eye, the gem, the gem. Oh, oh we're playing on. <laughs> yeah, the <coughs> yeah, it, it was the. Okay, no, at the middle lane, you see a blink coming in from both the initiates there. In Invokers out of position, getting silenced, getting skewered. Somebody has Orchid Malevolence, it's the Queen of Pain. Owls will not be able to run away from this. TP is coming in. Who is this? It was Axe, he cancelled. Big coming in from Hodor. Hodor doesn't find anybody because he blinked inside the trees. The only time you want to be inside the trees if you're running away. That's what Hi Hi said. Yeah, stay in the trees. Stay, stay in the, the trees, trees, man. Alright, so now... Dead Pan Gaming is suddenly caught off guard. Yeah, um, the Roche is up, but I don't think they have any good <coughs> Roaching heroes. Um, I still think that the Mirana should not have taken the Lincoln Sphere. Maybe instead they could have gotten a Maelstrom or a Desolator. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, because um, uh, look at the last engagement. The Mirana got initiated on the Axe and uh, everything else followed. Mm -hmm. Did the Lincoln Sphere really do anything against that? Not really. We'll no. talk about that soon because the fight is brewing. We now see Magnus picking up the axe once more. There's no, not going to be any initiates over Magi. Hold was able to throw in an Ignite right there somewhere. But it was disjointed. Nobody has the Ignite status. Anyway, it's going to be a push here at the bottom lane while, the, while Sneaky is mindlessly roaming around the Radiant Jungle while everybody else from K70 is in the bottom tier 2 tower near the tier 2 tower so wow just an exciting game <clears throat> so um, going back to that Lincoln Spear Mirana pickup yeah I agree that it's a very very bad choice of item because here's the thing if you go with Lincoln Spear it doesn't really add any value to the advantage of the app because you're not running away from spells in the first place yeah you're the one who's supposed to be initiating in team yes. fights you're so, the one defeating it yeah you should be dealing more damage so you need a Desolator or a Maelstrom to achieve that. Sometimes even a Crystalis. Yeah, it's not so bad of a damage item for Mirana. Mm -hmm. But in any case, I'm well, so um, still not, not um, a devastating item choice for them. Mm -hmm. They still have options in uh, for carrying. Queen of Pain right now still deals a respectable amount of burst. Has a backing bar right now, so it's going to be able to man fight the Invoker. Mm -hmm. Not gonna ha see a repeat of that one-shot combo. Oh, the Clinks teleported away before the Lion yeah, can find so him. <clears throat> this actually, I think that Clinks is um, going about this the wrong way. He has, he has enough items to actually position himself in team fights so that he can pick off the heroes from the back. So we're talking about Lion, we're talking about KOP. 
but for some reason he's trying he's really trying his hard to do the pickoffs he doesn't realize that we're talking about the mid game here everybody's just clumped together and especially if you have the blink dagger or that magnus and the earth shaker you're almost never gonna see these guys away from each other yeah um a clinks <laughs> doesn't really work well against a team that's uh, sticking together especially with k70's lineup look at these guys five always together you don't want to have a solo magnus solo magnus or a solo earth shaker they're not gonna do anything mm -hmm. so uh, they have really no reason to uh, stick apart from each other they're not really all looking for farm because mm -hmm. uh, they don't have a super uh, farm dependent hero they just want team fights after team fights so uh clinks is not yeah, really, uh, find the stun on hodor the question is will they initiate on top of this we have two blinks they might do the same thing on hodor they did the way they uh dealt with axe but no hodor will be able will be safe enough for him to blink out yeah so they really didn't want to go high ground but oh the, oh no clinks might actually get spotted but where is the lion the lion has a gem i think oh, the co-op with the gem, gem right the co-op with the gem no it's not where is the gem that's a big question um it's on the Earth Shaker, it's on the Earth Shaker. So, <coughs> and unfortunately, there, that the Earth Shaker was on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. So, Clink's here still stalking. Still He's wasting so much time. Kill. Yeah, that's, you're wasting time, you're wasting farm. You're not able to accomplish anything. Look at that score, 272. Not even enough assists to justify your 7 deaths. But, mm -hmm. um, I, uh, maybe here, but um, the Queen of Pain has a blacking bar. And the Mirana has a Lincoln Sphere, so <laughs> he's not gonna be able to do anything against these guys. Yeah, but so. I think, yeah, I think right now what he's, the what he is, what his purpose is is just scout the area. So they now actually they start tailing down LED, who can actually just blink into that. Oh, the wonderful blink there from Pow Pow locks the Queen of Pain down, and that is what he was. I think that's what he was aimed for, just scouting. But yeah, so not as effective, but at least it's something. At least it helps the the axe. <clears throat> You know, in this situation, I think that it would have uh, better suited them to have picked a Bounty Hunter instead. Oh yeah. At least, you know, yeah, actually that would have been the perfect pick. Mm -hmm. Bounty Hunter, because you can do the same thing. You can get scout uh, scouting ahead so the yeah. Axe can blink and the Vestal Spirit can move in. Yes. And if you're doing um, pick-offs, the, the, the Bones Gold. Yeah, yeah. So, um, actually... Yeah, and when you think about it, there's an, there's an implied, there's an emergent gameplay play, um, within taking Bounty Hunter, as you said, because the, since K7, he has a oh. lineup that usually sticks together a little, get to back that, back that, that soon. We see Quack X, X, S, E, locking down Papa and Papa might actually fall, the Shockwave misses, wonderful, but no, Blink, Magnus redeems himself with an Echo Slam, oh, oh with, an, uh, with, a, with an initiate on the Echo Slam, Papa will fall, Clicks falls somewhere, but Papa will be able to kill the Magnus before anything else happens. It just exchange back and forth. Three heroes are dead. Both sides. Queen of Pain responds and TP is in here. Will he? Will she be able to kill the Invoker? Yes. Blind Ultimate and Screen of Pain finds the kill there. BKB on top. Hold on. You cannot do anything on the BKB. You could TP, man. You could TP, but you're choosing not to. And the Fisher from Urchiker finishes him off. Team Wipe. Dead Fan Gaming has been wiped out. Yeah, that could have been a much better engagement for K70. And meanwhile, the bottom lane, we actually see Mirana pushing that. Oh, wow. Here's some rat action coming in from Mirana. They didn't even need that Mirana for a team wipe. But hey, you know, Mirana, if you had a Desolator right now, uh, this tower would have been gone. Yeah, but at the same time, maybe it's, it's a trade-off because what sustained him to push that her to push that lane was the star. So mana region. Um I don't think that's worth it. The desolator can actually push quite well. And the desolator debuff works in the structure, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's why you take down towers uh, and buildings quickly with a desolator. Mm -hmm. So going back to that discussion on the bounty hunter, so since K7 T really loves to stick to, to just join forces, to just hang out with each other a lot more often. The bounty hunter would allow would give you that advantage of knowing where everybody is because Dyer's when you see somebody in K17, you know that somebody else is there. Yeah, the track on the bounty hunter forces them to break formation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's a nice thing to have, especially when you're fighting against a team uh, uh, that's <coughs> oriented in trying to get uh, team fights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big team fights. Yeah, and as I was saying earlier, the heroes, the draft for K17 is something that's built upon. The, a, a big overhead of um, what do you call this? Reliability. So during oh, those yeah, times, okay, we have an engagement here. Papa getting picked off once again. The desolator, the Mirana is there. I think he heard your plea, coach, <laughs> and she has the desolator. But 
However, Invoker's able to pick up the Lion there. Ultimate coming from Hulling on a single hero. Pao Pao is there. Will the Fisher take in? No, Quack getting stunned by Vengeful Fear, distracting him enough to buy his teammate some time. One for one chase so far. ES, ES is still alive. No, he falls. Clinks now following, uh, chasing down this Magnus. Will he be able to kill this one? He has the uh, Alacrity buff and it's going to add an attack speed. It's a cure online. No, Yule Scepter coming in from Invoker. Oh, wow. Ultimate. That turn around oh, from Kino oh, Pao oh, just, oh, saves no. just saves the Magnus. Magnus is still alive. The Desolator from Fassi is just killing everybody. It's a team oh, fight again. Oh, that oh, fan oh, gaming oh, wonderful oh, play right there. You all, you all, well, I don't know, man. You <laughs> thought that Magnus would die, but he is still alive. That turn around, the comeback from LED is just... This howling. The, this howling. The, the team <laughs> captain showing you how it's done. He was the... And you can see that how how the alternated the skills right there. So if you look at the replay, everybody was just so disoriented at first because of the Mirana ult. And they caught Dead Man Gaming in such a bad formation that Axe was in no way was in no way in no position to actually initiate off the heroes and they just Dyer's let Mirana and the Kino Kane just deceived. walk away. They focus on Magnus because they thought, hey, Magnus doesn't have his ultimate, doesn't have his cure, maybe you could chase him down. But you thought wrong because just Dyer's in this moment, Kino Kane blinks and throws in the uh, ultimate yes, yes. and just finish everybody off. Quick, and the Mirana's Magnus. Desolator is just absolutely so devastating. Good. Nobody has armor. Did you see that? The, si the silence Dyer's from the Queen of Pain cancels the cast. The Ogre Magi is Fire Blast. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's a big play right so there. So big coordination. And I think they mistimed the Yule. <coughs> um, yeah, uh, Invoker used the Ogre Magi but then casted the Tornado. So it actually prevented the Magnus from getting killed. And what I learned, never fight against the Zenity after a loss because they are so mad. <laughs> yeah. They are so mad right now. Smoke coming in. From um, K7, K8, I think they want to get the Roche right now, and they absolutely can empower on the Magnus and the Earth Shaker. If you give this guy an empower, you can actually see that guy with a shadow to empower. It's huge, almost 600 damage. Yeah, so big bursts coming and in. Then, and shadow then coming in, 106, 477. That's around what 600 damage, almost okay. 600 damage for you. And you have Roche's armor by the Sun Strike is gonna see them, but too late. Too late, man. This is just too late. Now, the Mirana also is giving everybody position. No sentries from Deadpan Gaming. That's the worst kind of play that you wanna do. But the uh, Invoker buying everybody else on time because the Big Dagger has been cancelled. Yeah. Oh wow, Howling goes in for the ultimate Kino Pain picks up all the reverse polarity two heroes. Three heroes are now dead. Blinks finds the killer line, but Blinks will be spotted. Somebody has them. It's the Earthshaker. It's four heroes. Almost another team wipe there for Dead Fan Gaming. Will Dead Fan Gaming be able to come back from this? Man, I don't know. Um, yeah, you have to um, be un unbiased in these situations. Like we were a while ago. Yeah, we always say that. There's still always hope, but earlier it was because that uh, K7T was holding up on their high ground. Mm -hmm. But uh, here they've already lost a uh, lane of racks 36 minutes into the game. And yeah, and the next hero from that bandit will come in. Yeah, so um, they don't really have that much of a team fight potential. Their lineup was designed to win early on by uh, pickoffs. And now that they've failed that, I don't really see how they can um, come back from that. They don't have a super duper late game carry that they can back on. Yeah, and T70 is just going for it. No, There's no power at the top lane. I did not notice that. And now the rats are falling. T70 just wants to finish this. This will be mega creeps within the 37 minute mark. And the GG call from Dead Band Gaming. And the GG call from Dead Band Gaming just finishes. This game off. All right, so GG well played, and that's going to be a win for K17. And K17 with their second game of the night ends their night one to one. So one loss against Jonas with friends and one win against Dead Fan Game. Yes, so K17 redeems themselves in this game, and wow, just absolutely amazing. Okay, so, um, yeah. <laughs> so, All right. who do, yeah. So, who do you think was, um, what do you think made K17 win during that time, during that game? 
Ah, it was just the coordination, man. Mm. Their their picks. You know, I was doubting at first. Why did they first pick Earthshaker? Yeah, yeah. Why? Uh, Earthshaker is not the first pick, but you know, damn the meta, screw the meta. We want big team fights. We're gonna get team mm -hmm. fights. So we're gonna pick this Earthshaker. We're gonna pick this Magnus. We're gonna run <laughs> run you into the ground with our big team fights. Yeah, we, so we don't have a carry. They don't. Yeah, have they don't a have. Carry. A, they didn't have a carry. Yeah, they, they're not cheesing. They don't have crawl. They don't have the it's, jug. Yeah. It's also that part of the motivation to finish the game early on because you oh, you have you have this team oriented heroes and you don't have a core. And because you don't have this core, you are compelled somehow to finish it earlier too. And Deadpan Gaming, although they were having this big advantage during the early game, they kind of lost traction as the game progressed because you had this clinks and Invoker just yeah, trying to get a pick off. Uh, not really able to contribute too much. I think the Invoker wasted too much time going for that Midas. Mm -hmm. I think the Invoker was a bit too greedy there. Maybe he should have just gone um, pure Quaswex build. Mm -hmm. No Midas, Quaswex ganking. Mm -hmm. That's um, what they were aiming for, right? They mm -hmm. were aiming for ganks, um, Ogre Magi, Axe, Vengeful Spirit, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Invoker with the Quaswex build should have been able to do that better. A cold Snap. But I don't think we've seen a single Cold Snap in the game, right? Mm -hmm. No. Did you? Oh, well, well, there was. He tried to make it <laughs> look significant, but you almost don't notice it because it's either the Invoker dies almost immediately, or he throws it on a hero who he's not supposed to be focusing, wasting that cold snap on. Yeah. yeah. So um, one way or the other, Deadpan Gaming, in theory, they had the lineup um, set up. Yes. They they had an objective in mind, but for some reason they failed to uh, capitalize on what they were trying to do. Mm -hmm. I think it was because the clinks died too much too early. Yeah. And maybe because the invoker was bullied out of the lane for being greedy. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. Um, the, it, it's not that they were um, they failed in their lineup. Mm -hmm. It's not that they failed in their draft. Even towards the um, middle of the game, right? They were um, toe to toe. They were even in score against K7T. But I think they got a little bit demoralized when they got that massive team wipe by the yeah, <laughs> Earthshaker. Yeah, the tower. Yeah, so Earthshaker and the Magnus. That was, it was oh. surprising. I mean, it, uh, Earthshaker was completely off screen. Just Magnus brought everybody closer to him, and just can we see up. that again? Can we watch that again? Okay, so we might have the replay on that big ultimate. So it was, um, and also Passy as a Mirana, he was playing absolutely well. We, indeed, I agree that there was, he could have gone straight for Desol Desolator instead of the Lincoln Sphere. All right, we're go here. Um, okay, we're no, seeing care. the team fights right there. Okay, the <laughs> Echo Slam just absolutely wiping everybody out and it was the tower it wasn't even hitting anybody from that fan gaming can we see that again one more time because it was an absolutely good team fight and there you go everybody just getting erased <laughs> and it just so it gives me so this this high ha landing those big ultimates on four heroes yeah it also probably pushed k70 into a um uh, a victorious momentum yes, right yes that was so awesome <clears throat> everyone died in just three seconds mm -hmm. three seconds and mm -hmm. um it, it was uh, even a while ago it was like 10 8 the score mm -hmm. before that happened so really close mm -hmm. but um that sudden four man loss in two three seconds i that just really breaks your heart yeah <laughs> but Indeed. um fear but not deadpan gaming you still have a chance to get into this game we're gonna have game three tonight right yes and, and it's going to be that band gaming versus Jonas with friends, who by the way won the first round against K Seven T. So it's going to be the victor from round one and the um, loser from round two. Yeah, but that band gaming should be aiming for their redemption yes. this round, like uh, K Seven T did in the previous round. Yes, they so, still have a chance to put yeah. themselves in the board this game. But before that, we're going to move to the raffles. Yeah. So yes, um, okay. let's. So, Bring I'm back going the raffles to, um, again, as we promised in our Facebook group. Um, check out our Facebook page, by the way. You can find us at um, facebook.com slash elite community. As we've promised tonight, we're going to give away um, these nice goodies from Razer. Again, yes. we'd like to mention that uh, neither Elite Gaming nor uh, Rappler uh, is affiliated with Razer. But yes. we know you guys like gaming products, mm -hmm. so we're going to give... Um, these gaming goodies to you. Yes, so uh, it's a. Uh, I'm holding it upside down. Upside down. Okay. Oh crap. Okay. There we go. So we have Razer Dead Stalker for the keyboard and the um, Razer Crate for the mouse. Okay, but a reminder here the raffle links are just right there. Go to those links and fill up the forms and we will pick the winners. But be reminded that the, that the um, raffle for the mouse, the period for the raffle mouse is already over. 
because it was done during the first after the first round so now we're not talking about this please hold this we're talking about this the keyboard called the razor death stalker uh, essential yeah. so that means essential there meaning that it's really really good I think. so <laughs> now you have to go to the link called um, tinyurl.com exer game night raffle keyboard that's this that's the raffle that's open right now for the second game and if you put your name there when we draw the winners put, put your name there right now when we draw the names earlier uh later sorry after the game three you might actually have a chance to win this prize yeah, so um go to the link down there for the keyboard the second one yeah right there the second one you can enter your name uh mouse is done but you you can still join for the keyboard and we're gonna draw the winners at the end of the night after mm -hmm. game three okay so we'll take a short break before game three and we'll be here We'll be back here. Yeah, we'll be Mom. back in a couple of minutes. Just, just to hold on. Stay but, tuned. Uh, yeah, we promise great game coming up ahead. It's going to be uh, Deadpan Gaming once again versus Jonas, Jonas with, with friends. friends. All right, guys. See you in a few moments. <laughs> 